Good morning. It's great to see you here this morning. Like many of us, I have been thinking the past few weeks about George Floyd. And who of us can get out of our minds the video of a police officer with his knee on George's neck and George screaming out, I can't breathe. And as I was thinking of him saying that, part of me was relating it to this season of Pentecost when we are thinking about the gift of God's spirit as breath, as wind into our world. Have you ever stood outside in the field or in the forest and felt the breeze dance around you, rustling leaves and your hair? Have you ever stood on the beach of the ocean and struggled to remain upright against the persistent force of the wind? Have you ever felt the gentle dancing breath on your cheek from a child, a parent, or a partner? When they're so close, you can feel their rising chest and the tiny hairs on your face feel the fluttering breath. How might you describe this? Is there one word that would adequately express all of these? How might you explain the feeling to someone who hasn't experienced it? Sometimes our language is so limiting. The words available in English to us are wholly inadequate sometimes. The Inuit people of Alaska have 50 different words to describe snow. We might use many different words to describe rain, especially past few days in Kamloops. Drizzle, mist, heavy fog, sunny with a chance of showers, cloudy with a chance of showers, often on rain, downpour. I could go on and on. If I try to explain the difference between drizzle and showers to one of my friends from a desert area, they might have trouble understanding me. The language we use is important, and it can get complicated as we try to translate it for another culture, community, or language. What we've come to read in our translations of the Bible is spirit, or wind, or breath are translated from one Hebrew word, ruach. The Old Testament theologian Walter Bugeman says, the Bible struggles to find adequate vocabulary to speak about and name this unutterable, irresistible, undomesticated force that surges into history to liberate, heal, remake, and transform. We are left with this code term, ruah, to speak about what we know, but what we cannot say. In the Old Testament, ruah is the wind that parted the waters and created the dry land. It is the very breath that God breathed into humans in our creation. It was the spirit that parted the seas and allowed the people to escape from slavery into Egypt. It is the same spirit that Jesus claims and empowers the early church in the book of Acts. This ruah is active throughout our sacred stories. To complicate matters, our English biblical translations are inconsistent in the translation of ruah, expressed as wind, spirit, and breath. It's easy to mix the connecting force throughout the stories. I'm reminded of the story from the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel is one of the Hebrew prophets writing during the Babylonian exile in the sixth century before the birth of Christ. The Israelite people are displaced from their homeland. They're displaced from their promised land where they believe God resides. So not only are they far from home, they believe and feel they are far from God as well. 
Earlier writings talk of this separation from God and their homeland as feeling as if they were dried up and dead. A valley filled with dried bones, lacking flesh and sinew, lacking breath, lacking ruach. How often have we felt like a pile of dried bones? We've all experienced times when we feel bone tired, lacking in connective tissue and strong flesh, times when we lack breath, spirit, ruah. Ezekiel's prophetic vision speaks directly to the people displaced and lacking spirit. God tells Ezekiel to talk to the bones, to talk to the people, and God will put flesh back on the bones. God tells Ezekiel to call on the wind, the breath, to breathe on the bones so that they will live, saying, I prophesied to them as God commanded me, and the breath, the ruach, came into them as they lived. The ruach, the spirit of God, the breath of God, is present with us no matter where we might be, even if we are in a valley far away from home. Ezekiel is speaking to a pile of dusty bones, a metaphor for a people made from dust of the earth and enlivened with the breath of God, Ruah. I know I need to hear these words. I imagine we all do, reminding us that we are filled with the breath of God, the wind of the Spirit. We are filled with the unutterable, irresistible, undomesticated Ruah that liberates us, heals us, remakes us, and transforms us from the inside out. We are inescapably filled with the Holy Spirit from our first breath to our last. As Paul reminds the early church in Rome, you are not in the flesh, but you are in the Spirit since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Paul is reminding the early followers of Christ that they too are filled with the breath of God, so they should choose life accordingly. I think that Paul is saying to the people that you are filled with divine breath. Live like it. We are not just flesh and bones. We have the divine holy breath within us. Just as Ezekiel saw the dried bones did not live until the four winds of the Spirit had filled them, we cannot fully live unless we recognize that we are also filled with the holy breath of God. A mind set on flesh is death. A mind set on spirit is life and peace. A mind attuned to the body only, whether physical or metaphorical, is not life. But a mind attuned to the divine ruach within us and within all people and all living things brings life and peace. It is this divine breath, this ruach, that fuels our passions and animates our life. It calls us to action and elicits compassion and love. Brueggemann says of this ruah, it is a shaped, purposefully intentional force. He goes on to say, a wind of wisdom and understanding. It pays attention to the hidden connections and the process of life, refusing to reduce reality to beneficial techniques and strategies. That's what wisdom is all about. It's a wind of counsel and might, able to harness intention and the capacity to make a difference, to exercise power in saving ways. It is a wind of knowledge, skill and expertise, mobilized for the things of God, full glad acknowledgement 
that Yahweh's voice is a voice of newness, even against our old, tired, vested interests. It seems to me that this is no ordinary breeze. This is no ordinary breath. This is our life breath. It is the breath of life of all living things. We have looked at, a few weeks ago in worship, the creation narrative in which God takes the dust of the earth and breathes the holy breath of life into the human. This divine breath has connected us throughout history as the children of God. It connects us to our Creator, to Jesus, and to one another. I invite you sometime today to place your hands on your belly and to take a deep breath. Fill your lungs with a big, deep breath. Breathe into your hands. Feel the breath rush into every inch of your body. Feel the divine breath filling you up. Hold your breath for just a moment and then let it out. Feel it leave your body, rushing back out, taking anxiety and stress with it. Push all the breath out and hold it for just a moment. Then allow your lungs to fill with the fresh breath of God. Every breath you take, you begin with the breath of God. With every breath you take, you are filled with the Spirit of God. You are filled with Ruach. The Spirit of God dwells in you that you may live. Amen. And so I have been thinking of the breath of that man who was killed. I want to share with you a prayer from a service by the Reverend Andrew Willis, who is the pastor of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Geneva. Let us pray. God of love and peace, God of justice and fire, when the order put in place disorders your grace with bullets and bullies, hear those who shout, I can't breathe. When the holy kiss becomes a partisan sign of reckless disregard rather than an expression of love, favor those who choke out, I can't breathe. In the midst of corporate control and the conspiracy of lies, we plead, I can't breathe. As a virus raids a slum and insidiously tracks a migrant camp, have mercy on those who cough and struggle, I can't breathe. As cars return and airlines receive huge government subsidies, listen to the earth gasping, I can't breathe. The waters rise, God of sea and sky, but dominions do not rest from their wrecking power. Heed the world as it cries, I can't breathe. When we continue to inhale and exhale, as if the suffocation did not matter, as if our breathing were somehow separate from the struggles of others for air, align our lives with our prayer. Forgive us all that does not honor your love, all that does not live gratefully from the gift of your grace, all that restricts the communion that your spirit extends far and wide. Alongside all those who can't breathe, we seek the fresh wind over the chaos of our lives, setting us free, setting all your people free to breathe through Jesus Christ. Amen. And until tomorrow, I wish you God's richest blessings.